All right, everybody. It's the Stick and Hack Show. I'm your host, Adam Grubb, the Hack Stick. Mike Ryan is out on the driving range somewhere hitting ropes. I am desperately trying to get my golf game back in shape. Therefore, we have taken a summer hiatus of the show. New programs coming back at you in October. So right now, we're taking a look back at some of the classic episodes, some of the best of the Stick and Hack Show. And we go back almost two over two years ago, our fourth episode of the Stick and Hack Show with Dr. Chelsea Day, talking about the toughest parts of the game of golf. Not putty, not driving, not the dreaded fairway bunker shot. No, no. That's right here, the old brain. Keeping your head straight in your game. The mental game of golf. Dr. Chelsea Day, who is a sports psychologist at Ohio State currently and working with some of the top golfers of tomorrow today. Let's go back and listen to what Dr. Chelsea Day had to say here on the Stick and Hack Classic as the summer hiatus continues. And uh, so, so we bring in now a sports psychologist to really get into the nitty gritty here of my failings and apparently your one failing and your success. <laughs> uh, Dr. Chelsea Day, sports psychologist, director of counseling for IU, moving to Ohio State. Dr. Day, thank you very much for being part of the program. Thanks for having me. I'm excited yeah. to be here. So awesome. you heard that story. You heard Mike's, uh, right? He's a freshman. <laughs> That's a big moment for anybody. Yeah. He crumbled. Uh, you heard my moment. I crumbled. Uh, there are moments in sports where people crumble and they fail, but I think it happens more often on a daily basis around the world with golf than it does any other sport. The simple question is, why is that? Find me a popular sport that uh, you have as much time between movements, plays, shots yeah. to think about what you've already done what you're about to do and what's at stake, right? So things move fast in other sports. So you have all this time to think about, oh, that was terrible. Don't do that again. And as soon as you think, don't do that again, you do it again. Hmm. Uh, and then you have to think about the consequences. Well, I had to make up on this next hole, which doesn't work either. Um, <laughs> yep. And so we're thinking about, okay, well, I need to shoot this now to be here and depending on what this person does. So I think it's just because you have all of this time to be in your own head. And there's also, it's, it's kind of you and you and the course and maybe maybe one other person who may or may not be talking to you or three other people who may or may not be talking to you right. um so it's just you and your brain it's not and and it's different than tennis because tennis is quicker and mm -hmm. and there's it's reactionary yes tennis has i mean that's probably the only other sport i would say that where things are uh, it's just you in the court or mm -hmm. you against somebody right mm -hmm. um but it's reactionary and yep. you and it's you're just doing what you're doing it's athletic golf and i can attest to this you do not have to be athletic to play golf you have to have athletic movements but you yeah. don't have to be an athlete yeah. right we have we you've seen you've played well, against people your whole career like i that. can even speak to well to the point about having time between shots well for me personally if you're playing like a multi-round tournament it's the time between rounds even yeah you're thinking about oh what am i doing tomorrow what do i got to do in this hole what do i got to do in that hole and it's just constant it's constant i could i can tell you when i Specifically this year, playing in our club championship, like going in the last day. Is this just a way for you to tell us you're a club champion? No. Is this what this story is? <laughs> it is. It is. You caught me. You caught me, Adam. Um, no, you you do. You think about it all night long, and there's no yeah. reason to think about there it. There isn't. You sit there, and you're laying in bed, and you're going, just go to sleep. <laughs> what does it matter? No. And right? then it's 4 a.m., and you're still laying there staring at the ceiling going, right. And you have a you have a bottle of a uh, of Jack Daniels yes, on yeah, your nightstand. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So the time between shots is is important because they're they're in their own head, and this mm -hmm. is what people say all the time: get out of your own head, stop thinking, right? But golf is a game of thinking. You think your way around the course, you think your way through your swing. Sometimes you think your way through different shots and what you want to accomplish, how you want to get it get it done, and you also think about the double bogey you just had. And now you have to get off that train. You think about what your score will be. Mm -hmm. Hacks do this all the time. <laughs> Hack, I mean, honest to God, on the on the 11th hole, I'm doing quick math. Yeah. If I bogey every hole the rest of the round, I still don't do this, right? Or I will do this. It, it's an, it seems impossible for a thinking man's game to not think. If you think about the right stuff. Yeah. So we're thinking about strategy. We're thinking about where we want to put the ball. Or, or we should be thinking about where am I going to put this ball? Not all of the tedious details. You should be making no adjustments. Uh, you, you come in with what you've got. So you do what you're supposed to do. You stick to the game plan regardless. Uh, we often think about what not to do. So don't hit it over here. 
it's where the ball goes because that's what you're <laughs> yeah. thinking about. It's what 90, you're looking at. 98% of the time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so it's, it's thinking about the right stuff. You have to think strategically, not emotionally. Yep. All right. So uh, meltdowns in professional sports, um, there's nothing sweeter in the world mm -hmm. than watching a professional athlete who's getting paid millions and millions of dollars, um, sponsorships galore, idolized by millions, uh, hit a shank into the woods or <laughs> into the hospitality tent, right? Is there anything better for you? It's, it's good. It's enjoyable. <laughs> it's the best. I mean, it's probably doesn't make me a good person, but. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, let me just But clarify. whatever. It's fine. Nothing that yes. we do makes us a good person yes, when it comes true. to that. No, I agree, with, I agree with you. But there is something that is, that is uh, I, I guess, reassuring as an amateur athlete or as a, as a hack player, weekend player, to watch even the pros make bad shots because that humanizes the game. But there are professional meltdowns of epic proportions. I'm sure, Mike, you uh, what comes to your mind when you think of a golf meltdown of epic, epic proportions that people uh, talk about? Jean Vandeveld in the British, oh, British Open. Open. Yeah, 90, what, 98, 99, somewhere in the late 90s there. Yeah, somewhere in there, yeah. He had an um, eight-shot lead, massive lead, it and, was, and it was bad. Um, dumped four into the water. On And I have none of these facts right, but I'm going to no, say I'm confident. We don't. Sounds totally okay? legitimate. Yeah. This it, is where we need a fact checker. Right. Producer Shane, yeah. if he if he wasn't drunk in the corner, maybe he could help <laughs> us out. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's there's that meltdown is still talked about this day. Documentaries yeah. about that meltdown. Yeah. Because he was going to win. He was. He was right there. And <laughs> the last hole was just, it was hard to watch. It was like a train wreck. You, yeah. know, you could not turn your turn away, but it was just Jordan was Spieth, painful. Jordan Spieth at the Masters. That was more recent. Yeah. Um, that happened. So the why why do amateurs love that so much and and at what point does a professional bring somebody like yourself in and say how do I get through this what are the next steps for me to get past this round or this this day and move on we all remember the be like mike campaign right the only way we're going to be like mike is if he messes up because we're not ever going to get there it makes people more human it makes them more approachable mentally it makes us think we can actually be like them uh I mean, the talent that these guys have is just unbelievable. Um, and so, you know, you can be anything you want, but probably not that. Uh, <laughs> and so it makes it feel like we could be that, right? right. They make the same mistakes I do. Um, in terms of when people bring in people like me, uh, not as soon as they should, usually. Yeah. Um, but more and more, you see, you see it happening. Um, I think that, you know, we hold a big degree of confidentiality, so we're never going to talk about it. Uh, so there's except a lot for, more. Except for here. Except for right now. Yeah, I'm going right to share now. everything. <laughs> right uh, right <laughs> now. Is when, this is when we open up the floodgates <laughs> and, like we, and we and we go bad on these people. Exactly. <laughs> um, so unless they're going to tell you, right. uh, you won't know. So probably a lot more of them have used a lot more of us than, than we know about. Yeah. Um, but usually it's after the crisis has happened and it's cleanup mode versus mm -hmm. preventative and thinking about how do we... Yeah get ready for that because because we're all going to mess up even again the best of the best uh so we should be more proactive about it but you know yeah are there any books um uh, there's a lot of books i know uh, one is called be a better player um that talks about but it's very heady and mm -hmm. it's and it's very specific of uh getting into, into the play box and what you think of on your way to your course what you think and i mean i got it's a good yeah. book i read mm -hmm. it yeah. I, I retained 4% of it. Sure. Um, <laughs> literally what I just regurgitated here <laughs> as I explained the book is all I remember. But there's a lot of players that I think could benefit depending on how you learn from either talking to somebody like yourself, because you work with golfers a lot, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So there is a spot and a space for someone like you to come in and say, even for Mike, if he was having trouble in the championships, right? He does great in the, in the men's leagues. He does great in all these other things and, and wins some money. He, he always... 72, 73 is right around there, 68, 69 maybe every now and then. And then he gets into these big tournaments and then things go bad. Mm -hmm. He could come to you and say, hey, in this upcoming season, this is where I struggle. What do you tell somebody who takes it seriously, mm -hmm. is expecting great things out of himself, and is struggling in the big moments? There, there are a lot of great books. Uh, I tend to see those as kind of one size fits all, and I don't think anything is one size fits all. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we have to figure out kind of what's the root at what we're getting at. The books are great. They're inspirational. Uh, they're good people that have good ideas. And if we read the book that's not a good fit for us, it's not going to work, right? We're going to be trying something, and like, this doesn't work. Sports psychology is crap. Um, and so it's really figuring out, okay, what's, what's at the root of this? Is it the pressure situations? Is it that uh, I am too much in my head? Is it that I'm too distracted? Is it that I'm too kind of hyped up? Um, where are we at? And so we kind of start with that. 
uh, and figure out what are the little strategies. I'm, I'm a big believer in like small changes produce big results. And so usually it's just little tweaks of our thought processes. Uh, p- most people that are thinking about using sports psychology have played golf long enough that any error, it's not a physical error. Like your, yeah. your arms, your hips, your knee, you know what to do. Uh, yeah. It's all the mental stuff that causes you to change some of that. And it, and it goes awry. Yeah. Now you had said something about don't make any changes in, in the course mid-round. Yeah, <laughs> terrible idea. Yeah, it is. And that happens <laughs> awful. all the time, especially uh, with, with any high handicap, they will make an adjustment on the range <laughs> because right <laughs> because they watched the, YouTube, they, they yeah. watched the YouTube video driving to the course, <laughs> and then they got there and they're like, hey, I'm going to try to do this now. They hit 16 balls. It works. They get out on the course. It doesn't. Yeah. Yep. Now what? They're they're in their now they're in their head, and that doesn't work. So I got to go back to my old thing, and they're on hole mm-hmm. four, and they're just constantly thinking, and and there's no fluidity to their swing to their thoughts, right? And and you're probably your best rounds that you can remember, Mike. Yeah, you had nothing going on upstairs, right? And I don't mean that to, to be funny. Yeah. You literally you're only just you're just playing. Yeah, I think the well, obviously when I play my best, I'm. Typically, I'm one. I'm sticking to a single uh, shot flight, number one. So I'm not trying to hit a draw and a, and a or a cut. I'm just saying, all right, I'm going to hit a cut all day, every time. Yeah. That's all I'm hitting, and that's typically where I'm most consistent. When I'm most consistent, I'm my best rounds where I'm just trying to make the same motion every time, and you're not trying to do something different, you know. But um, that's typically what I have found for me that works the best is just focusing on knowing all right if i've got to hit a shot and it's under pressure is just focusing on the things that i can control you know having one typically it's i want to have one swing thought at at a time not three different things like one thing there's one thing that i want to focus on and make sure i do and it's typically for me it's firing my hips making sure i start my downswing with my hips that's the one thing that i always try and focus on and if i do that i typically get results let's go to the mental expert you like my job that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's you're dead on no that's, he, he can't yeah. he's he's got club champion responsibilities for the oh, next year right. he, that's very unfortunately, important yeah. <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> can't <laughs> sorry he's, I have too got many, a, he's got a parade he has too to many marshal. engagements i have to that's, attend that's fair that's, that's <laughs> very important role <laughs> uh, but no that that's a good advice right yeah. that swing thought is that something you would tell a player absolutely all the time uh that's how we get out of our body or get out of our head and into our body. Yeah. It's all about being in your body and not in your head. Let your body do its job. Control the controllables. There's all yeah. these really great little cliches we can yeah. say, mm-hmm. but it all boils down to focus on on what you're going to do. What is it that I'm going to do? Not 80 things yeah. I'm going to do. Yeah. Find one thing to think about. Yeah. Because, yeah, when you think about 30 things, yeah, I mean, a swing is a, is a quick movement. Right, yeah. We try to put too many thoughts in there. It becomes jerky. It becomes unnatural, yeah. and nothing goes where it's supposed yeah. to. I think one of the you were talking about books earlier. Uh, one of the, probably the one book from a mental aspect that I think probably helped me the most that I I read like thirty pages of and that was it. But I actually got something out of it was uh, it's called ga- uh, Golf's Not a Game of Perfect and it's by Bob Rotella mm-hmm. um, and with Dave Pels and it's just talking about it, just the name the name of the book says everything you need to know is I think people focus on trying to be perfect all the time in golf right. and golf is like so far from being able to ever be perfect at it that mm. it's just you lose yourself in, in all of the thoughts like you're talking about. You think about 30,000 different things trying to be perfect and then you're not even near good. Can you practice pressure situations like Mike's talking about? Can you get, uh, and, and we talk a lot about the, the professional athlete here or the, the top athlete, but somebody who's, who's a 22 handicap and is trying to get down to a 15, that's a, that's a pretty big jump, mm-hmm. but it's more doable in my mind than a eight to a one or an eight to a scratch. That's a, there's the same, the, the same distance there, mm-hmm. but it's a much different mentality of uh, an effort. What would you tell a high handicapper who is struggling with their game or struggling with a certain part the other thing, and this is a 14-part question here, I apologize. The other, <laughs> the other thing... Write these down. ...is that each day is different for a hack. Mm-hmm. For a stick, he might not putt uh, okay, but he's still putting a, a norm, you know, his, his normal game. Um, but a, a hack player, he or she can have a great day hitting the ball, 
and terrible day uh, around the green and then flip the next day. Where does that come from? And how do I fix that? This is basically a ruse for me to understand how the hell to fix my game. <laughs> well, we're going to need a, need a the, lot all, more time. All of this yeah. is just for me. We are. Weeks. <laughs> you know, I think that... <laughs> Thank you, Mike. I don't think there's a way to practice pressure situations. We're not that gullible. Um, and I don't actually think that's important. I think we actually need to practice calming down. We need to practice being less affected by pressure. So it's by having some type of routine where I can control my level of arousal. So am I... Am I over nervous? Is the adrenaline pumping? I'm going to, my swing's going to look different. If I'm practicing uh, in low pressure situations, being relaxed, staying relaxed, I'm going to be able to replicate that then uh, in those pressure situations. Yeah. So it's more about practicing staying mentally relaxed than replicating pressure situations. Um, in terms of different aspects of the game, I don't believe in momentum. I think that momentum is a cop-out. Um, it's an excuse for us to give up on something. So, oh, I'm putting terrible today. No, you're not. You had a few bad putts. If you decide you're, you're putting terrible, it's a good excuse to keep putting terrible and not pay attention to it yeah. and not take control of those thoughts. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's that we got into that momentum of I can scapegoat putting and now I'm driving great because I'm relaxed because I'm only thinking about the putt when I get down there. I don't have to think about this drive because I'm already thinking about how to salvage the putt. And so I've gotten out of my head on driving. And then if the reverse happens the next day, it's because I've scapegoated my driving, right? And that's what I'm thinking about every time. I'm overthinking it. And when I'm putting, then all I'm thinking about is my next drive. And so it's a way for us to kind of scapegoat <laughs> a, a piece of our game. It's genius. <laughs> it's pretty genius. <laughs> it is pretty genius. It's also a slam that. directly <laughs> at me. Direct, you see, I was just staring at you the whole time. I know. You didn't know Mike was here. Didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a, this is a, a question I think um, and Mike and I, ha it doesn't matter if you're incredible or, or okay. You have the same, you do have the same thoughts at some point. In those pressure situations or even in something that isn't even pressure, but you make, you pull it on yourself. So you're over water a par three or a 150 yard shot that is over water uh, and the green is just over there. Um, bunkers, bu you know, right around the green. All you see in your mind is the water. And all you're saying to yourself most of the time is what you said earlier, don't hit it in the water. Don't hit it right. And I don't care how great you are. Even top professionals probably think at some point, oh no, mm -hmm. I can't be left here. Now, their reaction is much different. Sure. Their caddy's saying, don't go left. And he's like, okay, fine, I won't, right? But in, in an amateur's head, don't go left is uh, that's a, the kill zone mm -hmm. at that point, right? <laughs> so how do, you, how do you get past that? And, and what, is, what is your advice? Well, you don't stare at the water, which is also what someone's doing, right? I'm staring at the water thinking, oh, my God, don't put the ball there. Uh, it, it's all about looking at, we want to focus on visually, where's the ball going to land? That's the only thing that matters to look at. Where's the ball going to land and how am I going to get it there? And then it's, it's interrupting those thoughts, finding a process. I'm really into mindfulness. I think mindfulness is the key to, to golf. Um, and so that's all about coming into the moment and saying, okay, what am I focusing on right now? What's my swing thought? I've seen exactly where the ball is going to go. That's the only thing I'm looking at. And all I'm thinking about is what to do with my body right now. Uh oh! Don't you don't do that um, for sure. Uh, <laughs> so good. I don't even. I don't even know what to say. We're such a professional operation here. It's amazing. He's taking it. a picture. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to do something good. That's what it. sucks about it. it. All right. It's multitasking. Can, I love it. We can cut through that. That's fine. <laughs> the thoughts are going to happen. We don't want to deny that. We don't want to be like, oh, don't think about it, because then you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. Eighteen times stronger. Yeah. Um, but it's recognizing it. Moving on to what are you actually going to do here? Even if you don't believe that's what you're going to do, because you might not. But yeah. What, we'll what about uh, can't hit the 80-yard shot? So or, a, or chip. Right. How about that? Right. Or is that a – I'm sorry. Are you looking right at yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you can't chip. He had some issues last, <laughs> last, last, <laughs> last Friday. Yeah, I did. Um, it, it, was, it was one of those where, where it, it crept into my mind, mm -hmm. and it stayed there. For 16 holes. <laughs> and, and I couldn't, I, I physically couldn't do it. And, and there's a, a, a magic word called the yips. Mm. I wasn't there yet, mm -hmm. but it was creeping in to where I was, I was nervous. Yeah. There's no reason to be nervous. I'm 40 years old and we weren't <laughs> playing for any money. It was the middle of the afternoon. Yeah. There was no reason to be nervous about something so stupid and so silly, but I was. Sure. Um, but there's certain shots that, that people can't hit 
and they don't they as soon as they get to an 80 yard shot if it's over water it doesn't matter mm -hmm. they are they're already mad at themselves because mm -hmm. they left themselves in 80 yards uh, in um, what are those pre shot thoughts that that can get somebody out of that that rut Yes, that's that narrative piece, right? I've, I've kind of scapegoated this. Oh, I'm not good at this because it also reduces your risk because then if it does go bad, you're like, well, eh, see, I'm, yeah. I don't chip or I yeah. can't hit that 80 yarder. Um, you know, I think it's really focusing on we're capable of anything. And what's really actually cool about golf versus other sports is each shot is completely, wholly, totally independent of the previous shot and of the next shot that we've seen people mm -hmm. get out of some wild spots, right? Yeah, because... Yeah. Each shot is independent versus sports where uh, one pass affects the next pass, affects kind of the, the play and the momentum. We have to be able to compartmentalize that each shot is independent. It doesn't matter how I hit this shot on this same hole yesterday. That is, it has nothing to do with anything. What am I doing? I, I couldn't disagree. Right? I couldn't disagree more. <laughs> well, it shouldn't. Here's where we're yes. starting with some of our problems. That's right. Um, but it's, it's this independence that this is a different shot. It is unique to right now, to today, to this round. Uh, and how do I stay focused on that? So we're, ta we're talking now to Dr. Chelsea Day, sports psychologist, director of counseling for uh, Indiana University and moving uh, to Ohio State uh, this, this coming season. Um, Mike, there, there's got to be something that you could, that you, that you need to know. This can't just all be about my uh, shortcomings here, right? I'm, I'm okay with talking okay, about fine. your shortcomings only. <laughs> I, I, I think that's... Uh, all right, so why do I hit a grade on the range and then forget <laughs> how to play golf five <laughs> seconds later? Okay, that's one. And uh, uh, we'll get to a couple of member, uh, some classic questions uh, here in just a second. But I want to talk about the, the confidence one more time. Um, when things are going great, they're going great. When things are going bad, they're going bad. Um, how important is a partner in that. So you so a lot of times you have a, you're, you're playing with somebody, whether it's a buddy or whether it's a, a teammate, um, can you lean on them and what can you get, what can you say to your, your, your player that you're playing with and say, Hey, can you, if, if this, if this starts to go bad here, mm -hmm. tell me this, if this starts to go great, mm -hmm. tell me this, is that important for amateur golf? It can be, uh, it's, but it's, you have to know what you need. Mm -hmm. Um, so with our, our golfers at IU, we talked a lot with coach. Here's, Here's what I need. I want you to walk with me a few holes, or I want you to not like wave as I'm walking by, or I want you to give me a correction, or I want you to ask me what I want for dinner because I want to think not about golf. But so you have to have the awareness of here's what I need from that person and then be able to say, hey, I need you to help me in this way. And it's immensely helpful because, again, when we're stuck in our own head, yeah. having that person, and for some, again, it's totally non-golf related. Yeah. Uh, ask me where I got my shoes. Uh, for, for some people it's, if you talk about anything but golf, I will be so distracted that it's not going to go well. So it, it's really, it can be important as long as you've spent the time identifying what you actually need and you're actually like, Hey, do something. When I get frustrated, can you like fix that? And it's obviously not going to, going to go real well. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying, uh, there's something, it, it, was there something last year I could have done in Labor Day to, yeah, you, you uh, asked like, for another well, cart. At one point. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. Was that the wrong thing? I, was that wrong? <laughs> no. But, Should I not have done that? But I think, I think that part of, part of you and, and most good players they, and, and respectful players don't want to get involved mm -hmm. in someone else's game sure. unless asked. Yeah. Yeah. And even then, he doesn't know what to really say. Oh, keep going, partner. You got you know, it. You got it, bud. You're the best. You're okay with you this rock. game. You know, you're, you're costing yeah. me thousands of dollars <laughs> with every <laughs> shitty shot. Yeah. But right now, you, you've got it. <clears throat> I think that's where the, there's that little mix of, mm -hmm. okay, but, you know, just, just here's what I need. Yeah. But isn't that thinking about things too much, too, at some point? If you're in the weeds during the round, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. This is where planning comes in, right? So we've thought about it. We know what we need. Yeah. You know if you're someone who wants a cheerleader. The last thing I want in any sporting endeavor I do is someone to be like, you got this. Like, I'll just look at you and be like, I don't, I'm done. I don't, I'm over this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want someone who's going to kind of be tough or say nothing or yeah. um, a technical thing. But some people, you have to know that, right? Yeah. So if you're, you know, on the third hole and you're like, hey, um, I think what I need is X. And then in hole six, you're like, actually, that wasn't it. Uh, I've really been thinking since then. Yeah, it's it's thinking too much. You're doing too much. Right. So yeah. it's it's that pre preparation I, stuff. Yeah, I definitely I find uh, there are certain things that I'm not necessarily not okay with, but that I think probably throw me off. 
Um, like one thing, like if I've got partners that want to that want to help read my putts, I'm not as good at that for some reason. I don't, I don't know if it's just it gets in my mind if there's more than one opinion in my head about where I'm going to hit a putt that that's probably a problem for me. But I try and do kind of the same thing when I work when I play with anybody. I try and say, "Do you want me to read your putts? Do you not?" So I kind of know ahead of time whether I'm like going to be spending the day helping them read putts or not, or when do they need my help. And I kind of try to communicate that way, but it doesn't always work out as was evidenced by last year's Labor Day tournament. I cannot wait till that conversation's (laughs) over. (laughs) I really can't. That's going to be a great day. That's going to be a great day. Hey, after this year, you, uh, you know, it's over. (laughs) I know. Unless I draw you again. (laughs) And then immediately, (laughs) then immediately withdraw from the tournament. (laughs) Um, all right. So, uh, the, the age old question in, in the middle of the round, why do I play this game? Mm-hmm. Why do I torture myself with this game? I hate this game, right? You hear it. Uh, and, and people and, and grown men, m- me included, you included, get frustrated at, at sometimes to a, a boiling level. And you go afterwards, like, oh, my God, why? What, what does it matter? Why is it that important? I'm going to play again. I'm not selling my clubs on <laughs> Craigslist. I'm going to continue <laughs> yeah. playing golf. Yeah. Why am I so mad? Is it that 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 constant need to be better? Is it the constant need for for just your own your own self confidence and self worth? I mean, where why do people say they're going to quit the game and then don't quit the game? Why do they hate golf so much and love it? We don't like being bad at things. I hate being bad at things. Uh, so in a moment when we think we're bad at something, we don't want to do it anymore. Or any of those things you mentioned. We're embarrassed, we're frustrated, we feel like we've invested so much or we've been trying so hard, this new technique and it's not working. What's the point? If that doesn't work, nothing will work. Um, it, but it's it's like marathoners, right? Like yeah. never doing this again is awful. And then afterwards, like, I can't wait when we sign up for the next one. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of sports that are that way, yeah. right? Where in the midst of it, it's kind of painful in some way. Um, but you get to the end, you're like, I, was, I have perspective now. Um, we make decisions for now us, not future us very well. So like now me, who's just hit four terrible shots, it's like, this sucks. I'm done. This is stupid. What a waste of time. And you get to the end, you, you've salvaged it. And you're like, huh, all right, well, next time. Right. Uh, yeah. What's the, what's the saying? That's the shot that keeps bringing you back. Yeah. So it's typically on 16 or 17. And, yeah. and after you've had a, a terrible round and you hit, you hit a great shot or great, you know, a 30 foot banger yep. putt and you're like, oh. I guess I guess I I can't play back. this game. Right? Cuz <laughs> you've given so. up a little bit, right? right. So you're yeah. not as stressed. Yeah. You've relaxed, you're yep. resigned, exactly. you've stopped counting, you're mm-hmm. just swinging the club, and once you let go and just swing the club, things go really well. Yeah. That's what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we'll get you there. I've not not experienced that firsthand, <laughs> but I've heard that that's the, the the way to go. Keep at um all right, so uh, let's uh, get into the clubhouse here. This is uh, get to know you, okay? So this is uh, Get to Know Chelsea Day, sports psychologist and uh, director of counseling. Um, this, these come from our members, okay, okay, the Stick and Hack members. Would you be invisible in your current time or invisible in the past? Um, like my past life or like past, a past time in, in history? Good clarification. Yep, let me uh, go to <laughs> Producer Shane. Producer Shane, where are we at? We are in the uh, any past. Any past. Yeah, I any, would say any, any past. Any past. His, yeah. So you can be invisible today, anywhere in the world, in the world. Yeah. or you could be invisible in the past, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. that. I would say in the past. Kay. I feel like I, I could learn some things. That's good. That's yeah, a smart answer. I agree with that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I would just go back to just... I'd, just find, I'd, I'd be on... I'd just find out who shot JFK. <laughs> I think that's pretty well documented. <laughs> I don't think you have to be in. Oh. Is it? Okay. Oh, <laughs> my. It, oh, my. This is quite, this is, show's taking quite a turn. Um, all right. What makes you laugh the most? Uh, dogs. It's, it's, we, dogs are so like stupid yeah. and they're just wonderful Perfect. and they're Love just, it. Yeah. and they don't get their feelings hurt. Yeah. Um, I've never had a guest pander more to Mike <laughs> in my life Love it. Than, than you are. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, Love what is dogs. your, what, yes, what is your go-to karaoke song? Oh, man, it's usually, um, it's usually 90s rap of some sort. <laughs> yes. Um, it's awesome. Occasionally some TLC. Um, yeah. if I can do some Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls, I feel there good about is. that. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm never going to turn down a 90s rap song. <laughs> right, well, Perfect. who, who would? Right? Really? I know. Well, your TLC, your favorite? No, they're just really karaokeable. 
Mm. Um, they don't go too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and at varying levels of uh, coherence, you can still <laughs> complete it without <laughs> full embarrassment. I like that. Um, which yeah. feels yeah. That happens solid. from time to time. Occasionally. So have you done that before? Have you have you belted that out? I have, Kay. yeah, at the Monkey's Tail, Broad Ripple. Oh, wow, yeah. very local reference. Nice, very, <laughs> love it. Very <laughs> local, yeah. For those of you not in the, in the Indianapolis area, yes. Broad Ripple, <laughs> Monkey's Tail is where uh, everyone makes terrible decisions. It is the karaoke <laughs> spot. <laughs> uh, well, Chelsea, thank you so much for being a part of the Stick and Hack show. Any any last parting thoughts for uh, for Stick and for or for myself, the hack? Mostly um, for hack. And for, and for our audience on, uh, <laughs> on how to enjoy the game of golf uh, more. Stay in the moment. Focus shot by shot and just like chill out and relax <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's well. supposed to be fun, dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah game. It's yeah. a game. Yeah. 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 I disagree. All right. There she is. Dr. Chelsea Day resonating today as well as she did then. The mental game of golf. It's so, so important and such a strategic part of any golfer's game that typically uh, gets forgotten about, especially in the throes of the actual round itself. Hopefully you learned something there on that interview. And if you heard it two years ago, maybe you brought something new to it. Maybe you, like me, you forgot all about it. Dr. Chelsea Day, contributing writer for Stick and Hack as well. And uh, she writes The Psych Factor. You can find her column every month on stickandhack.com. That's Dr. Chelsea Day. This has been a Stick and Hack classic episode. As the summer hiatus continues, new shows coming at you in October. We hope to see you then. Have a great, great week, everybody. Goodbye. Okay, we're done. This has been the Stick and Hack Show. Go to stickandhack.com to become a free member of the world's greatest golf club without the course. <laughs>